Alright, our next team uh, customer is uh, Techno Frolics. Uh, and this is a choreographed LED artwork. And the team is the team number three, the LED dudes. <laughs> the light of the Hello everyone. We are the LED dudes, apparently. <laughs> uh, I'm Chris. That's Mike. That's Kev. That's also Chris. And that's Matt. So, lighting is a subtle yet very important type of art. Similar to the effect of a film score in a movie, lighting can set the mood and, you know, make a room uh, completely different, change, change someone's opinion of it, uh, make it prettier, make it uglier, basically change, every, uh, change everything about it. This is why, you know, lights are, lights are low in a fancy restaurant, colorful and bright in a concert, and uh, also bright in a classroom. I keep those students' attentions. All right, Professor? <laughs> it's a very powerful uh, artistic and environmental control tool. So, the objective for our project was to develop a visually striking, modular, kinetic, choreographed uh, LED artwork module. Basically, how this, uh, there will be a PC application that will transform the video into a data stream of color values and send the data over Wi Fi to the actual module itself. Which will uh, transmit the uh, take take the take the information from uh, from the PC program and transmit it to RGB values that will uh, display on display on our RGB LEDs. So we thought potential applications for this would be um, you know gala center pieces so at a, you know, like a career fair or you know job fair something along those lines. Uh, you know making your aquarium prettier and you know helping keep those fish entertained. Fish get bored really easily. Um, and creative residence lighting, so you know, making making your home more appealing to those who visit you. Our two our our two main deliverables are two <coughs> LED boards that will uh, that will have a microcontroller, current drivers, battery, flash memory, a Wi-Fi module, and then the 16 RGB LEDs that will actually show you know the video that the user creates and a C++ application that converts a video stream to 16 pixel array of RGB values and then utilizes the PC's internal Wi-Fi card to send the values to uh, the actual module itself. Chris is gonna talk a little bit about the software now. So, our software can be looked at in two parts. We have the video processor module, which actually opens the video and converts it to the color values for the LED. Um, then there is the actual LED output part of the software which sends that to our to our modules. Um, so the way that video processing works is that the user selects a video, it's opened using the OpenCV library, and then it goes frame by frame. Uh, the video processor basically breaks each frame into a four by four grid and averages the colors of each section of that grid. Um, it then saves those RGB values and outputs those to a file. Um, then from there the uh, the Wi-Fi card would actually open that file that was output and send that over Wi-Fi. So they're done in two completely different steps. Um, so the way the video processing works, here's some examples. Uh, it's much easier to actually see visually. Uh, so this would be a frame from a video that the user had input. So you see it averages it into that 4x4 four four grid, and those would be the colors that the 16 uh, uh, LEDs would be. So there's just two, two different video examples. Um, now, we wanted to give the user uh, more than just a basic layout of breaking the video into a 4x4 four four grid. Uh, perhaps the user only wants to analyze one corner of the video, or only wants to analyze it for four LEDs, and doesn't want all 16 LEDs on. So, uh, we, we made what's called a tag frame. And this allows the user to have a lot more control over what parts of the video are analyzed. And so the way a tag frame is made is included with our software is up in the right corner, you see that LED1.png. There's 16 of those images included, each with a very specific color, each corresponding to what section you would want that LED to be processed. So basically, the user could take those images and make a larger image. And based on the areas where those images are found are the areas of that video that would be converted for that LED. Uh, it makes a lot more sense in pictures. So some examples of the tag frames are at the bottom. Um, a full tag frame on the left, it shows the one, two, three, four from right to left. 
uh, that would basically make a mirrored version of the video. So that would let you have maybe one you might want to process the video normally, and the module next to it you might want reverse, so you have a full mirror effect. Um, so using that, that sort of idea, there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, but as you can see, one, they don't need to be uh, square. They can be any sort of dimension as long as it's above a 10 by 10. Um, and they also don't need to include all the LEDs. If an LED is not present on there, if a color is not present on there, that LED will simply be off during the entire video. Um, so here's some examples of them actually in use. Um, it, as you see, there's, we have the tag frame overlaid on top of the video, so you have an idea of what we're talking about. Um, so for this one, we basically only wanted to process the left, the left side of the video. So if you see uh, the left image, that is the original video with the tag frame overlaid. And in the bottom is that side analyzed. You see it's mostly the green end of the video. And we did the same on the right side. So now you could use two modules next to each other to sort of create a larger image. And this, as you can see, can also be added. You might only want to do that for a quarter of the video and now have four modules together making a larger image. So it really does give the user a lot more uh, uh, functionality. Though. So now we'll talk about the Wi-Fi. So for the Wi-Fi, wireless ad hoc network. Um, we chose, we made this decision so that um, our system could function in an area without, where a wireless network would not be available, readily available. Um, and a wireless ad hoc network is basically a, a regular Wi-Fi network without uh, access points like a router. Um, this can be easily done um, through and Windows by going to the control panel and just going to that network and sharing center. And how we identify each LED module is by their IP address. Um, we set each one with a unique static IP address. So the basic general operation would be that the user would uh, create that app on the PC. Um, and then once they open up the application, um, the application will ping the, mod the LED module. And if the LED module responds to this then the module will be in the first box right here, meaning that it is available to send to. And then the user would then select an LED module, and then you would press the open file button, which would open up a open file dialog, um, where they would select the video file in the form of a CSV file that was outputted from the video processing program that we have. And then after that, after they just select the file, the file will be shown here, and then they can load the file, press the button, press the button. This would send the file, then all the CSV data over Wi-Fi to the module using a TCP protocol. And then afterwards, after the file is loaded, it will have a message box that says the file has been loaded. And then the user can then just press the play button, play the video, or press the repeat button to play the video on a loop, and then once you're done, you just press the stop button, or just turn off the phone. I mean, turn off, turn off the phone. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm gonna uh, shed some light on the uh, embedded software. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> All right, so we uh, use the uh, ISP 4380 and F5529, the A and ISP. And uh, the reason we use the big ISP is we have a lot of communications with, so we want to something that I can handle that. Um, the clock speed is uh, 8 megahertz. Um, it's uh, not too fast, but we have a lot of timing that we have to um, keep, in, keep in check, so we need a, a decently high uh, clock speed. Um, the embedded software is broken into four files. Um, Wi-Fi.c, which talks to uh, Matt's Wi-Fi module. Um, the UART, um, Flash.c, which uh, is a memory, it's two megabytes of flash memory, which we found. Um, can store about five minutes of video, which is our my customer, my customer requirement. Um, I squared C.C, which talks to the three current drivers over at an I squared C bus. And uh, main.c, which is a state machine for loading everything and uh, playing like that. Um, peripherals we use were uh, timer A, obviously for, for timing, and um, the uh, UCA A1 for UART, and now it's for the Wi Fi module. Uh, we chose a battery rate of 115200. Um, that's the highest baud rate that the Wi-Fi module supported, and now is to install. This is most important when loading a file. You want that loading to be as fast as possible. Um, 
Um, for our SBRC, we used a standard 100 kilohertz uh, bus clock. And for SBI, we just used our uh, submain clock, which is running at 8 megahertz. Um, we went to as fast as possible as well. Okay, um, we, um, so this is a, a basic flow chart for what happens. Um, so first, we initialize the modules in the clocks, um, set the fallout out rates, um, set the main clock, all that stuff. Um, then we go into low power mode. Um, we wait for an interrupt from, from, uh, from the Wi-Fi module where you are. Um, once we receive an interrupt, we have to handle that interrupt. So it either, either can be a, a command or data. Um, and we handle that command, and if it's a load command, we start loading files in, and that's going to be a lot of data coming in. Um, and then if it's a play command, um, as you can guess, we play it and um, play the video, read the, read the values from the flash, and write them to the current drivers. And if it's a stop command, yeah, yeah, we stop the video. Um, so, yeah, it's basically the embedded system in a nutshell. And the mic's talking about hardware. So, I designed the hardware for our system. I'm going to start with the block diagram for the system. Uh, at the top, you see the power options for our system. There is a battery. On the back, the cell phone battery, we have a buck boost converter that can allow for the batteries to be below 3.3 volts and still so people supply the voltage and current we need to run our system, as well as the USB 5 volt input that will allow us to run the system while the battery is charging or the battery is low. And along that system, there's a MUX that prioritizes the USB power. So if you have a battery plugged in and it's low, you can plug the USB in and it'll just switch over to USB power. The system won't restart. Uh, as Kevin described, we're using that microcontroller with three different communication protocols. Um, the most important communication protocol in the system is I2C, and we chose that based on current drivers having one master um, and three slaves that will switch between very quickly. Uh, uh, and then there's the, the three current drivers, uh, one for each color. The LEDs have a red, green, and a blue channel to display a full color spectrum, and it was important for us to have uh, a current driver for each color, you know, similar to a color printer where you have a toner for each color, except our system works when you run out of one toner or a driver prints out. So this is a, a 3D model of our PCB. Uh, it was important for our customer to give us the requirement that LEDs cannot be put in backwards or fall out or short. So we used RJ9 connectors, which are just standard phone connectors. LEDs stay in place. If you turn the module upside down, they don't fall out, and they can't be placed in backwards. There's also a versatility of the design, which I'll explain on the next slide, that allows you to have either short LED nubs or strands of any weight. We have onboard debug LEDs, which allow us to uh, debug the system a lot more simply. The Wi-Fi chip has its own debug LEDs that shows when the network's connected or when it's searching. Uh, the programming setup is just TI's 5 wire, so it's a two-wire JTAG, which is, you know, it's slower than standard JTAG, but that wasn't an issue for us because we're only loading two kilobytes of code. The communication range for our Wi-Fi chip is about 100 feet, which is another customer requirement, and it seems fine at that, that uh, distance. We haven't been able to test further because the hallways are only so long in this building. Um, as Kevin also described, we have flash memory, which is two megabytes, and that enabled us to forego streaming video from the computer so we can load a full video and play as many times as we want without having a computer be busy or having to write a multi-threaded program. Battery life, as I described before, is about two hours of full runtime. So when that runs down, the battery part is also about two hours. So you can either switch over to USB or pop the battery out and put another one in. It's a case that's on the back that's uh, easily accessible for the battery we have it on the side show you, as I described, this option for powers and one current driver for each color. This is what I was talking about, the versatility of design for the LED connections, which is also, uh, it, it goes back into the tag frame discussion. So as I described, we have the LED nubs, which are pictured right there. Um, this is the LEDs inserted straight into the RJ9 connector and correct, and then they pop in and out really easily. Um, Part of what the tag frame was developed for was for creating uh, light displays that aren't necessarily a grid. And this is what separates our design from what already exists. Uh, you're able to take these LED strands and create whatever length, whatever length you want. There's a brass cord inside, so you can bend it and it'll stay wherever you bend it. So if you want to make a circle, you just bend it into a circle and then you select tag frames in a circle for your system. 
process the video that way. There's a mesh housing, so it looks nice. And uh, heat shrink's moving at the top and bottom to keep all the cubicles uh, in place and the, the brass cord in place as well so it doesn't spin around while you're trying to bend it. And uh, that's our system. Flash memory contains the processing of the video into your DAG, is that correct? Can you say it again? The flash memory, you have two megabytes of flash. That contains your your processed video in, exactly. into your DAG, right? So how much video in gigabytes is that that you're converting into, into this flash memory? Um, well, I, well, so I, I mean, that's that's actually a good interesting um, as far as how big of a video, the video is all based on resolution. We bring down, let's say you had a, an HD video or something like that, that gets boiled down to like 16 RGB values. So it's tough to really make a conversion because it can sort of process any resolution of video. Um, but I guess it's more so in length. We had we found that about like a five minute video was okay. giving that was my almost point. a megabyte of, of uh, data, maybe a little more. So yeah, two megabytes of flash can store about 10 minutes Okay. Uh, standard standard <coughs> resolution video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even even high resolution because as I said we, we get 16 values. It doesn't matter how how HD the video was when we processed it. So the reason you decided to load and store the video data as opposed to streaming it. Um, yes. Yeah, so actually, uh, because our, our software is in two parts, there's a tab that you can either be on the, the Wi-Fi or the actual video processing. Um, this allows us, one, to process videos and not have to process it every time you want to use it. So basically you process it and it creates this file that you'll have as long as you want to keep that file um, that you can then load whenever. Um, and so by not streaming it, uh, we, one, it's, it's not, you don't even need the laptop once it's loaded on the module. You can close your laptop while it's playing or something, open it back up, replay it, and just it's open. Um, it basically just allows them to be a lot more Does the SDI become a bottleneck if you want that video to be longer? Uh, 